This is the Berman Method podcast featuring Dr. Jake Berman and physician assistant Jenny Berman. We are here to treat problems and not symptoms. Disclaimer, this podcast is for entertainment purposes only and not to treat anyone or to give medical advice. If you are interested in any information that we are giving and would like to use this for yourself, we recommend that you contact your primary care physician or reach out to us and ask us questions about yourself specifically. Enjoy. Bum, ba, da, dum, bum, 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 bum. The Berman Method Podcast, where we are David against Goliath, going against the corporate medical system and pharmaceuticals and toothpaste and mouthwash and anything else that we feel like attacking that we don't believe has your best interest in mind. Dr. Jake Berman here with my beautiful co-host. Jenny Berman, physician assistant. How was that for an intro? Very good. If you didn't listen to the last week's episode, go back and listen to it. Some of that will make a little bit more sense, but I am really excited about today's episode. Today is going to be fun. I cannot wait to get into it. Real quick, last week's episode was a very, very important one, and it should have really got you thinking. So if you did not share last week's episode with somebody, please, please, please share last week's episode with somebody because we really want to spread the word. Again, this is all our opinion, so you need to do your own research. However, we do want people doing more research instead of just taking what the TV commercials are saying for the almighty truth. Right. Good? Good. So today we have a fun one. This one's going to be way more fun than a lot of episodes that we have because I'm going to start it right out of the gate and say, what do you think? Let me say it this way. How would you feel (laughs) if I started ordering a cup of ice cream with breakfast? Mm -hmm. I would say, Jake, we need to have a meeting. Okay. How would you feel if I said I was going to start ordering a cup of orange juice with breakfast? Ew, why? (laughs) How would you feel if I said I'm going to start ordering a cup of milk with my breakfast? Do you want to put 200 pounds on a baby steer? (laughs) (laughs) listen to last week's episode if that one didn't make sense what if i said i wanted to start having a cup of coke with breakfast what is wrong with you (laughs) (laughs) what if i said i wanted to start having a cup of apple juice for breakfast ew oh i don't i'm out (laughs) gross why why i guess i would say why are you sick so we just named five things right out of the gate. And I said a cup of everything because we did the math on all of these things and looked up the nutritional values. Jenny did look up all the nutritional values on all these things. And we wanted to make sure that everything was apples to apples (laughs) (laughs) and the same serving size of a cup. And one cup meaning eight ounces. Yep, eight ounces. One cup, eight ounces. And the, where I got this idea was we went out to breakfast a couple of weeks ago. And it seems like we, I get so many good ideas when we're out to breakfast because the vast majority of the population thinks that they are doing something good and they're really not, which is very different from knowing that you're not doing something good and still doing it anyways. Right. Very, very different because I don't eat 15 cookies in 90 seconds thinking that I'm doing something good for my body. Right. I'm intentionally saying, good luck, diabetes, or good luck, metabolism. Let's see if you're up for the challenge because I'm about to F some things up right now. (laughs) Right. So when we're out to breakfast, to to say it in simple terms, is we know if we go out and order, and like not we as in me and you because we don't, but when you go out and you order at breakfast French toast, you generally know that's not a great decision for nutritional value as opposed to ordering 
two eggs with chicken sausage, right? Well, you got to be careful of that because you say you generally know that. People don't generally know that. We know that. Well, I think French toast is a little bit more obvious, whereas where I was going to go next is some people will order an eggs Benedict thinking they're doing the right thing, right? Because they're getting the eggs, they're getting the ham, they're getting the English muffin. That's a balanced breakfast. It's really not, but because two eggs is only 12 grams of protein, two slices of Canadian bacon, if you eat the whole entire serving, is just not generally enough protein compared to having an entire English muffin with all of that hollandaise sauce on top of it, plus the side of grits or potatoes that come with it. That adds up to being a lot of lot more carbohydrates than it does protein. So that would be the gray zone in my mind where people go out to breakfast and order an eggs Benedict thinking they're doing something good for their body versus if you ask someone what's healthier, eggs Benedict or French toast, they're probably going to tell you the eggs Benedict, right? I would, yes, I would agree with that. So as opposed to if you ask someone, what should, what's the healthiest thing you could get on the menu? Eggs with chicken sausage and eggs Benedict or French toast. They're going to tell you the eggs with chicken sausage. It's a little bit more obvious as opposed to what we're about to dive into. Yeah. So again, I don't want you guys listening to feel like we're attacking you every time you go out to eat. I think that you need to enjoy dining out. I sure do. Every time we dine out, I don't hold back. I see things on the menu that are absolutely horrible for me healthy wise or nutritional value wise, and I stay away from them. And then I see things on the menu that are really, really great nutritionally. And most of the time I stay away from those too. Right. When I go out to eat, I like to enjoy it, but I'm not going to go hard in the pain. I usually steer down the middle, usually more towards the healthy than unhealthy side, but I know what I'm doing. So when you go out to breakfast, just know that when you order a cup of orange juice, it's pretty much the same as ordering a cup of Coke, which is pretty much the same as ordering a cup of ice cream, which is pretty much the same as ordering a cup of apple juice. Was there one more? Milk. Which is pretty much the same as ordering a cup of milk. Right, right. So to back up a little bit on what you're saying is, you know, when you're eating out, you you don't want to deprive yourself because if you deprive yourself every single time you eat out and always go for the quote unquote boring meal in your eyes, eventually that's going to backfire on you. And so certainly we practice what we call flexible eating or balanced eating. If you want to use the word balance, life is never balanced, but I like the term flexible eating because 90% of the time we're eating at home and we're on track, quote unquote, with our nutrition, following the right macronutrients, meaning proteins, carbs, fats. So the 10% of time that we go out, we are flexible. We get things that we wouldn't normally make at home. We might have a little bit more fat or carbohydrates with eating out. And this all depends on where you're at in your lifestyle and your meal plan. Right now, we are in a point where we want to essentially maintain but gain lean muscle mass as opposed to some of my clients who are in a weight loss phase. When you're in a weight loss phase, we have to be a little bit more dedicated to our eating plan, whether we're eating in or out, as opposed to when you're just maintaining, you have a little bit more flexibility in your meal plan. The other thing that matters is how often are you eating out? We eat out two days a week, right? Friday nights and Saturdays, we eat out and then Sunday morning for breakfast. So two whole days when you add up all the meals, as opposed to a lot of our clients will eat out seven, eight, nine times a week between lunches and dinners uh, with it being season. And it's not to say that you cannot be in a weight loss phase or you can't maintain your weight with eating out nine times a week. You just have to be a little bit more, not a little bit, you have to be more disciplined and dedicated to your meal plan when ordering out, when you're eating out that many times. Yes, agreed. And the thing, again, we just want you to know the decision that you're making is this a healthy one or an unhealthy one versus thinking that you're making a healthy decision and it's actually 
detrimental and it's right. making it worse because when we went out to breakfast and I decided that we we're going to talk about this topic, I heard both of these answers. So one table to your right, which was straight across from me, ordered a cup of orange juice. Actually, that was the table right behind, behind me you to ordered, your left. Yeah. Ordered the cup of, corp of orange juice. And said, all right, getting my vitamin C in. Mm -hmm. And I said, yep, and about 20 grams of sugar. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then the person to my right ordered the grapefruit juice. Yep. Which, yeah, is essential. Yep. Well, essentially the same as apple juice. So Hold on. And oh. then one that didn't happen on this particular day, but we hear it all the time. I'm going to order a glass of milk because it's full of calcium. I need my calcium. Yeah, I need to get yeah. my calcium. Mm -hmm. So all of those things are true. Vitamin C is in orange juice. Calcium is in milk. Grapefruit juice... I don't know. Antioxidants. Antioxidants. Yeah. Juices have antioxidants, which yeah. is supposed to help with boosting our immu immune system. As Jake mentioned, calcium and vitamin in the milk, vitamin C, which again is helpful for the immune system and also our bowel health in the orange juice. We could even argue that ice cream has healthy fats in it and calcium in the ice cream, right? It's made from milk. Yeah, calcium and healthy fat. <laughs> so, you know, all these things we could argue you are healthy for us or there's the marketing that it is healthy for you because it has these these vitamins and minerals in it but there's better ways to get these vitamins and minerals yes yeah, so let's do another analogy real quick we should have talked about this one before we got on air so i could we could have a little more data behind it so you're saying or people are thinking that they're drinking a cup of orange juice to get the vitamin C nutrients out of it, but discounting the fact of how much sugar is in it. Right. That is synonymous to me saying, I'm going to go to McDonald's and I'm going to order a Big Mac to get the protein and discounting how much fat mm -hmm. is in a Big Mac. It's like, yeah, I got my protein, but was it really worth the cost of the 11 hundred million grams of fat that came in the Big Mac? Right. And carbohydrates. Carbs, yeah. Because, I mean, and something else you don't think about is on that Big Mac, the amount of ketchup that's on there. That's full of sugar. <laughs> ketchup is sugar. <laughs> let's not, hold on. <laughs> let's okay, not, we're getting on Let's go back to the facts real quick because you actually did the math on all of these. A cup of orange juice, a cup of milk, a cup of apple juice, a cup of Coke, and a cup of vanilla of ice cream. Let's do the numbers real quick. So a cup being eight ounces. So just keep in mind that a can of Coke is 12 ounces. So the facts I'm about to list is actually for less than one can of Coke because it was all for eight ounces of each item. I wanted it to be apples to apples. So eight ounces, one cup of each, each of these items. So first of all, which one do you think is healthiest? Milk, orange juice, apple juice, <clears throat> Vanilla ice cream or Coke? Prior to you doing all of this, I would have guessed that apple juice would be the least horrible out of all of them. That would have been my guess, just because I know milk is horrible. I know ice cream is essentially milk, and I know orange juice is horrible. What do you think was the worst? I would have guessed... Again, prior to this, I would have guessed Coke would be the worst. Okay. So you would have said Coke was the worst for you yep. and apple juice was the best for you. Those would have been my two guesses without you telling me anything prior to this. Okay. All right. So for a cup of, let's start with milk. Do you want to start with the best? Let's go, let's go in order. Okay, the best one for you. Because they're listening to this. They're not seeing it visually. So say the the healthiest one. The healthiest option. Okay. Yeah. And healthiest being, is it really healthy? The least horrible the option. The least horrible, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. The least horrible option is a cup of milk. Okay. 2% milk is 13 grams of sugar. 13 grams of sugar in eight ounces of milk. In eight ounces of milk. How many cookies is that? Oh, well, I guess it depends on the type of cookie, but I'd say a cookie. Okay. So a glass, uh, one two, eight ounce. Two Oreos. One eight ounce cup of milk is like two Oreos. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Sugar wise. 
Sugar wise. Yes. There is eight grams of protein in the milk. However, the 13 grams of sugar does not discount yeah. that. Don't, don't even go there. Okay. Because then people are going to say, well, I got my protein. Okay. So the next one that is the least bad for you, not the healthiest, but least bad, second on the list is orange juice. Eight ounces of orange juice has 23 grams of sugar. 23 grams of sugar. So that's four Oreos? That's like a Snickers bar. That's a Snickers bar. So an eight ounce cup of orange juice is like eating a Snickers bar. Let me see. I'm going to real quick just look at a Snickers bar. That would be my guess. Let's see. A Snickers bar has 20 grams of sugar. So a cup of orange juice, eight ounces of orange juice is worse than a Snickers bar. Eight ounces of orange juice is worse than eating a Snickers bar as far as sugar content. And really not that many less calories in the orange juice than the Snickers bar. (laughs) So a Snickers bar and your cup of orange juice are pretty similar. Wow. Okay. And now we've got three more that come after this. Yes. So the third on the list. So again, we're going from the best quote unquote for you to the worst. Third on the list is Coke. Eight ounces of Coke has 26 grams of sugar. 26 grams of sugar. So all of you out there ordering your Cokes for breakfast, just know that you might as well be eating a Snickers and a half or a Snickers and two Oreos. Yeah, I mean, 26 grams of sugar is almost your sugar content for the whole day that you're getting from eight ounces, not even a whole glass of Coke. Yeah, just eight ounces. Eight ounces of Coke. Yeah, so usually glasses are 16 ounces. Right. So that's twice Especially at restaurants. So There's if you're a getting a whole glass of Coke, which is 16 ounces, that is 42 grams of sugar. Wait, is that right? 52 grams of sugar. 26 plus 26 is 52. Yes. yes. There's math. <laughs> My math major here. Math on the fly. 52 grams of sugar. <laughs> Good job. In a glass of Coke. That's like more than two stinkers bars. Okay. Next up is... We have a tie for the next one. Apple juice and vanilla ice cream. Wow. So I wasn't even close. Eight ounces of apple juice and eight ounces of vanilla ice cream. 28 grams of sugar. Come on. Eight ounces of apple juice is like eating a bowl of vanilla ice cream. A cup of vanilla ice cream. I mean, a cup of vanilla ice cream. So an eight ounce cup of apple juice is exactly the same as eating an eight ounce cup of vanilla ice cream. When it comes to sugar content. Sugar. Now, of course, apple juice does not have the fat that vanilla ice cream has, but when it comes to the sugar content. We don't even want to talk about the other nutrients because at the end of the day, what you have been talking about for the past two to three years now, however long we've been doing this podcast, is blood sugar levels. The... Yes. Right. Sugar is yeah, so, the worst thing for you. Yeah. So let's not go down this rabbit hole. Let's just say that for the past three years, Jenny has been preaching that sugar is the absolute worst thing for you. We all know that. However, we've been spending the past three years talking about why it is that way. So yeah, these five things have calcium, vitamin C, antioxidants, proteins in them but it's all negated because they're full of sugar. So let's let's put it into perspective a little bit clearer. So I guess the healthiest one out of all of them, or the least bad one out of all of them, was the milk that had 13 grams of sugar in it. That's mm-hmm. still 13 grams of sugar. Mm-hmm. And that doesn't even talk about the fat. Right. Now, the thing that most people get at breakfast is orange juice. Mm -hmm. So people are getting orange juice and it's coming with 23 grams of sugar in it, which is worse than a Snickers bar. Worse than a Snickers bar. So when you have an eight ounce glass of orange juice on your breakfast table, just know that sitting right there next to it is a Snickers bar. You're essentially eating a Snickers bar for breakfast, and that is how you're starting your day. That's how you're jump-starting your blood sugar level is you're spiking it through the roof. You're starting your day by spiking your blood sugar through the roof. Right. 
Right. And it was interesting because when you first brought up this topic at breakfast that day, you said, when is orange juice actually good for you other than when you're in a blood sugar crash? That's how you put it. Yeah. Because people use orange juice to bring their blood sugar up when they are in a blood sugar crash, meaning their blood sugar is too low. Yeah. When I was doing internships in the acute care setting, so in the hospital, there's multiple times where we'd be walking patients and they would just start collapsing and hit the ground because their blood sugar had dropped so fast and got so low that they hit the ground essentially. And nobody ever panics. They just say, orange juice, stat. So we're trying to feed this patient orange juice on the ground because it's instantaneous, almost instantaneous. Within minutes, they're like, okay, I can get back up again and go again. Because that's how good it is at spiking blood sugar. Right. Well, we went through that with Stella when she was in her controlled fast state where they dropped her blood sugar real low. What did they immediately give her once they drew her blood? Apple juice. Apple juice. Yeah. Two little cartons of apple juice. And she hammered those things. And she hates juice. Hates juice, but But her body knew that she needed the, her body knew it. She didn't know it. Right. She's three years yeah, she's old. Three. Yeah. But her body sensed what was in that. And it said, oh, give me that now. I need it now. And she chugged two cartons of, <laughs> of apple juice. Yeah. And we're both looking at each other going, she's never drank juice in her life. Yeah. And she pounded it. Right, right. I mean, she wouldn't even drink when, you know, we were at a birthday party once and somebody tried to give her one of those little high C things. She wouldn't even drink that. But yet... Yeah, her body just knew she needed sugar. So again, apple juice being the the one of the most the highest sugar content juices out there, that's what they gave them her in the hospital to spike her blood sugar back up. So think about it doing that to your body. And again, this is all of this information we're giving you is just so you have the knowledge when you are ordering to know what you're ordering. Yes. Again, I'm not trying to judge you. Make your own decisions. You can judge me till the cows come home because I go hard in the paint. When I decide I'm going to do something, I go hard in the paint. But at least I know that I'm not doing something healthy. I know that I'm sabotaging myself by doing this and I make a conscious decision. So when you're at breakfast drinking an eight ounce glass of milk, picture two Oreos instead. And if you're okay with that, then drink the milk. Right. The next time you're at breakfast and you're going to drink an eight ounce glass of orange juice, they usually come in 12 to 16 ounces. You're going to drink an 18 ounce glass of orange juice. Just picture a full size Snickers bar next to it. And if you're okay with that, drink away. You know what we should have added in this? Maybe we'll have to do it next week. A vanilla latte. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do an addendum or we'll do it at the beginning of next week's episode. Take That's notes and we'll do it. Or the caramel whatever, Moki whatever. Cha cha lata <laughs> peppermint schnapsy kamalata. <laughs> yeah, that thing. Oh. So what's the next one? Coke. Next time you want an eight ounce cup of Coke, just picture a Snickers bar and an Oreo. Right? And then last but not least, the next time you want an eight ounce cup of apple juice, just picture an eight ounce cup of vanilla ice cream instead. And if you're okay with that, then drink it. Right. Right. But if you're not okay with it, don't drink it. Order something else. Yeah. Just figure out the rest of your macros for the rest of the day (laughs) to keep you in line with your flexible eating. So this is an episode that should be the most shared episode that we've ever recorded because it is impossible to not know at least one person that is violating at least one of these things unknowingly, right? You have to know, you the listener has to know at least one person where they think that they're doing something healthy by drinking orange juice every single morning. They're drinking apple juice. They're drinking milk. I would guess that at least 75% of the people listening to this right now still have real milk in their refrigerators. 
And that's okay. Just know what you're doing. I'm not saying milk is horrible. Get rid of it. Boo on milk. I'm just saying, just know. You know, I don't say anything about beer. We know beer is not healthy, but it tastes good, <laughs> right? <laughs> Yeah. And that's the thing is you have to figure out what's important to you and how to balance it in your day. So if a cup of milk is really important to you, figure out those macronutrients in your day. Just don't pair the cup of milk with the Raisin Bran cereal, with the French toast, with the potatoes and the fruit at breakfast. And then wonder why your pants keep getting tighter. Right. And, you know, we can bring this into next week's topic. Probably a good thing to review coming into the new year is why blood sugar is so important. It's not just for the way your pants and your clothes are fitting you. Your blood sugar is going to predict your brain health, preventing Alzheimer's, dementia. Obviously, diabetes is affected by blood sugar, but that comes with numbness of your feet and losing the feeling of your feet and your hands. Heart disease is greatly impacted by blood sugar. And not to say, oh, you know, I'm totally fine because my doctor says that my A1C, my average of my blood sugar over 90 days is normal. What is normal? Exactly. It's not optimal. So we're talking about sugar today because of the overall impacts it has on your longevity, your brain health, your balance, the way your clothes are fitting, your heart. It's the, the make or break. Absolutely. And the one last thing that I want to end this episode on is we're still in January right now. So people are still excited about New Year's resolutions. Let's get back in shape. Let's hit the gyms. Let's start moving better. Let's get more active, this, that, and the other. You've got about another week or two and you're going to lose the excitement. You're going to lose the motivation because it's not easy. The scale's not going to move as fast as you want it to move. It's not easy when that alarm goes off at 415 every single morning. And, and it's it, cold. And it's cold, especially for us Floridians when it's 60 degrees out. We're going, ooh, turn the heater on. Give me another blankie. It's not easy to keep going. So if you heard one thing on this episode that shocked you, like... A glass, a cup of orange juice, an eight ounce cup of orange juice is synonymous with eating a Snickers or anything that we talked about. What else do you think that you're currently doing that is healthy that's actually detrimental and you're sabotaging yourself? You know, how many times are you willing to chance that on your own before you say, Jake, I want your help. Jenny, I want your help. We are here to help you. We are here to be your coaches. We are here to show you the way. We're here to be the guides to show you the way. It's so much easier getting from point A to point B when you know the exact route to go instead of trying to figure it out like Lewis and Clark back in the day. The only reason why Google Maps is so successful at getting you to your destination in the fastest amount possible is because it knows where you're currently at. And then it knows all the routes along the way. It knows the longest route and it knows the shortest route. However, when you don't know the route, you've never been to the destination, how are you supposed to know what's the quickest route? What's the right route for me? Am I walking? Am I bicycling? Am I in a car? There's all these options on Google Maps now. So the, the map to get from point A to point B could be very, very different if you're walking versus if you're driving a car. It could easily take you five minutes to walk from point A to point B, but if you try to take the same route with your car, you're never going to get there. So we're still in January. Let's keep the motivation. Hire us as your coaches, your guides. We will take you along the way. We'll get you to the results that you're looking for. Quit working harder and start working smarter. Good? Deal. I like it. All right. Happy January. Ciao Ooh. for now. Keep on keeping on, baby. Here we go.
Thank you for subscribing on your social media and podcast platforms to The Berman Method. Dr. Jake Berman with Berman Physical Therapy and Jenny Berman, Physician Assistant with Berman Health and Wellness. You can find more information on our website, www.bermanpt.com for physical therapy, bermanpt.com forward slash wellness for the health and wellness. You can also find us on social media, Facebook, Instagram, and on your podcast platform. So be sure to follow us, like us, subscribe to us. And if you would like any further information, definitely visit our website and reach out to us. You may also find our free reports on the websites as well, where you can download this free information for yourself. Have a great day.